Hey guys, welcome to video number two on how to use Harmer. In this video, we're going to be discussing just the timbre section or oscillator section, which is this far left corner here, kind of dips down and encompasses this area here. It's kind of divided by these little tiny punch-in holes. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video, but you'll, you'll sure be able to see it on your own screen. So that's uh, today's topic. So first things first, we, go, we want to look where the sound generates from. And that's going to be these two waveforms here, which is these two oscillators. So on the left-hand side, we have a saw, which we hear by default. On the right, we see a square wave, and we can mix between the two with this mix knob. So all the way to the right is going to be the square, which is just odd harmonics, and then the saw. And we can kind of fade in between those as it says fade here which if we click this down here, we have different blending modes. So we have subtract, which is going to subtract timbre two, which is the square wave. It's gonna subtract those values from the first one. And then it's gonna multiply. If you select this one, it's gonna multiply those values from two to one, maximum and minimum and so on and so forth. And then we have another one down here called pluck, which we'll kind of go into a little bit later once we talk about the pluck section. So let's leave this on fade here and let's talk a little bit about these couple buttons up here. The very far left is going to be start, and this is going to be your initial starting phase of your sound. Now, if it's just by itself, it kind of doesn't really matter. You're not going to really hear a change. That's because it's not in relation to anything else. So this is kind of useful if you're maybe using both parts of Harmer, or maybe you have something else uh, playing at the same time, and you want them to have a little bit of phase cancel cancellation, or maybe change the sound a little bit. That's where that will become kind of useful. So next up, we have the random knob. And this one's kind of cool because if we have this to the, to the top, it's just going to be constant. But if we take it all the way to the left, it's going to randomize all the partials phase, which has quite a different sound. So here's what it normally sounds like. So it kind of gives a kind of kind of intense sound. It's kind of I kind of like it for saws or maybe even for for plucks or something like that. It gives kind of a just a, a nice random. It's kind of messing. It's making everything not so uniform. So let's put this back to center. And then if we go to the right, what it's going to do is basically make the uh, the phase of free running mode. So it's not as as constant restarting every single time. And it's very noticeable in unison. So let's crank this all the way up to nine and let's place a little bit here. Let's put this to how it usually is. And all the way up. Kind of gives it a little bit more of a, a smoother feel. So let's put this back to the center there. And the next up, you might be looking at this, uh, these uh, waveforms and you're like, okay, well, I saws are cool, squares are cool, but I want to make something. I want to add some harmonics and all that stuff. So what you want to do is you can click this here, or alternatively, you can right click this. You can analyze a single uh, cycle waveform. So you can bring in like a, a waveform you've already made or that you've got somewhere. You can drop that into here as a, as a single cycle. And it, it'll take this cycle as like the first cycle. So make sure to kind of edit around that. So you don't want like, I don't know, a noise in the beginning of a sample. So make sure to cut it exactly where you want it to uh, to use it in Harmer. Or you can randomize it to a, whatever random value that you think. But if you want to adjust it yourself, we'll click this. And this is going to bring us to this line editor that says Tamar 1 Harmonic Level. So basically, if we're looking at this, we can see there's the light lines, the dark lines, the light lines, and the dark lines. And those are going to indicate the different octaves. And then the vertical bars are going to be the different harmonics. So this line basically says it's all flat, which is going to create our saw wave. So we're like, okay, that's all cool, but I just want a sine wave. I just want one sine wave, and I will be happy. So let's make a node here. Let's click this. Let's bring this all the way down. So this first harmonic or fundamental is going to be the only thing playing. And let's scroll all the way out and grab this little node here and bring it all the way down. And then we can see up in the top left that it now makes a sine wave. And if we play it, it's just a sine wave with one harmonic here, or one fundamental here. We can see in the spectrum view and on our EQ as well. Now, if we zoom back into this, we can also add more nodes and more things to this. So if we want to turn on uh, the second one, let's bring this up here. Now we have two. You want to bring the third. 
the fourth, the fifth, and so on. You can do that as much as you want. You can change the different levels of how loud they are and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of kind of cool there. So that's kind of that how the uh, timbre one harmonic level works. So let's go back to our default. Let's start fresh again. Now moving on, we have this little small button here. It's kind of hard to see. It's easy to overlook, but what this does is it, it's basically configuring the right, right here on the tooltip subharmonic configuration. So we have two choices. We have a round, fundamental, and below, and it's going to be default on a round. So with this, let's let's play a note here. Kind of bring this down so it's not as annoying. And if we bring up this first sub, watch what happens down here. So it's in a way, if you think about it, kind of like a sub oscillator, but it's just one sine wave or, or, or one harmonic, so to speak. Then we have a next, next one here, which is going to be above our fundamental. And this one's going to be higher. And we can see it reflected down here on the EQ as well. So we'll do, go through that one more time. The second. And the third. Now, if we do below fundamental, this is more so noticeable on the EQ, which is one of the reasons why it's here. So we see that really low one at the bottom there. Now this one's kind of not really showing because it's very low, but let's do a, a higher note. So that's very far down there. As we can see this here as well and down there. And then the third, which is very low. So it's kind of up to you depending on how you want to arrange that, but that's what they do. So it's like back to round fundamental. And then you're gonna see this prot. It stands for protect. So this is going to basically protect your low end from being filtered. So if you have uh, a really solid fundamental and you want to do a lot of crazy filtering, but you're like, I don't want, I want my fundamental to be strong and, and not to be filtered. This is where this is going to come in handy. So we have our saw wave. Let's bring up a sub here. So we have this, uh, technically, I guess you could say fundamental, but it's not really, it's a harmonic, but you know what I'm talking about. We have this down here. Now, if our prod is down, it's kind of low, so let's do this. We can see it getting affected here. So, if we took our prod all the way up, now it's not even touching it anymore. And if we play around with this, we can see what that's doing there. And same with the next one. And so on, so forth. So this is going to be the protect knob here. Should hopefully make make sense. It protects your sub. You're protecting your subwoofer, or your who knows what, whatever you're protecting. And the next step, we have this clip, which is going to be more so visually uh, represented down in the EQ. So let's click this button here, and we have a couple different versions here. So the first one is default as high threshold, and all the way at the top, it's going to be disabled. But as we turn it down, watch what happens to our harmonics. Let's bring our filter back up. So as we can see, the the low end of our uh, of our saw wave is kind of getting quieter and quieter, while the high end is kind of sticking around a little bit longer than it should, and then it finally, eventually, if it's all the way down, it goes all the way off. So it's kind of a way to almost, it's clipping it, but it's almost a way to think of it as it's kind of balancing your harmonics on kind of a, a macro kind of level. And then next up, we have the soft threshold. Now this one's a little bit backwards, all the way up is gonna be fully engaged, so this brings all the way back down, and let's, let's watch what happens. So it kind of tames that top end a little bit there. And it's useful to see here too, because you can kind of see as the levels dr dr drop down too. And then further on, we have different kind of harshness, harshness, I guess you would say of that. that one's a little bit like I said sharp and then we have a hard threshold now this one's interesting too because this as you can see it's almost like you're adding and removing harmonics it's like you're kind of hacking them off
which is also a, a, maybe a quicker way to make a sine wave. You'll click this, go to hard threshold, and then play until you get one. Then you get you get a sine wave. It doesn't really reflect it here because it's not really from the oscillator itself. You're just removing it. So that's kind of in a way to think of it that you're subtracting it in that sense. But you're also adding. It's kind of confusing to think about it that way. And then as you drag it down further, you get your saw wave. And then very last not least, you got subtraction, which is kind of like what we just did, but it's a little bit smoother and not as as harsh, I guess. It's a little bit fades through. It's kind of a softer middle ground between the others. All right, so let's put this back to high threshold, put all the way up to disable it, and let's move on. So next up, we have the FX slider. And right now it's at zero, so let's turn on some effects just to kind of demonstrate this. Let's turn a chorus on. All the way at nine, maybe kind of exaggerate that a little bit. And maybe some reverb too. So it's very obvious we have some effects here. So. With this effect slider in the middle, that means your effects are all going through, you're hearing them, all is good in the world. And as you go higher, your effects go away. And at the very top, there's no effects being played. And then it all the way goes back down to zero, your effects are on. And then there's also the bottom, which also disables it, but also inverts the polarity of your signal. So that's kind of like why it's a bipolar switch. So let's, I'll click that back to the center. And the next we have our global volume. So let's take off our effects entirely. Uh, take it for reverb. All right, we're left with a boring saw wave. Okay, so now we have our volume. At the default, it's at zero, so no boost, no cut. All is good in the world. We can bring it down or we can bring it up. I won't do it too loud because you can obviously get it, know what it does at the very top, and I don't want to hurt your ears. So, but then you also notice, okay, why is it also also by by bipolar switch? So, if we look at our our oscilloscope down here, and I'll move it really fast. Hope you can see how it kind of inverts the polarity right there. That's kind of what that does as well. And then you'll notice there's an ENV, and you're, maybe you've played with this before, and you're like. Okay, that's like the volume, but this is also the volume. Like, wh what's what's the deal with that? The deal with that is this volume here, this center one. As you notice when I move this, even if it's really quiet and we can barely hear it, our partials are still showing up. So this tells us that this volume knob is is basically the data is given into Harmer and then it's created into the data and then is then transferred to audio and then now we control the slider. So it's post the data that we give to Harmer. Whereas the envelope is pre, so the the uh, the harmonics will follow with this envelope, and we can see that reflected as we get quieter. So that's the big difference between these two buttons here. Now next up is this auto gain knob, and honestly, I haven't really found very much use out of this, but basically it's described as if you have a couple harmonics, it kind of will auto balance the uh, the gain from this. So the closest I've gotten to kind of hearing an effect, so let's go to like maybe two harmonics here. It's very, very subtle. You can kind of see the EQ moving while I move this knob. And then as we add more of these harmonics, kind of gives like a balance but it doesn't seem very very useful to me maybe there's some certain weird thing that maybe you know about that you would like to use this knob for but in my experience I haven't really felt the need to jump straight to this knob for whatever reason and then next up uh, last but not least we have these three velocity buttons you're like what the heck do these things do so I conveniently have a uh, piano roll here and as you see, this is just three notes of C4, kaboom, right? And then we have the velocity all the way at the top for the first one. This next one here is about 50, 50, 49%, so about halfway. And then this one's, I don't know, what, 10, something like that. So these notes are going to deal with, as you know it, 
velocity. So I'll put these down here so we can still see it, but just know this is very hard velocity, half velocity, and quite low velocity. So with this first one, uh, select here. Let's turn our envelope on. Now, if you notice, if you're paying attention, you're like, hey, wait a second, we have an attack here, and you're right. So this basically says, how much of this attack are we going to ignore? So if it's really hard, there's, gonna, there's not going to be any attack. It's like, nope, you know, it's too hard, there's no attack, that's it. But if we do a halfway, we're like, okay, we have a little bit of attack going, all right. And then if it's very slow or very soft, pressing the key, it's going to play, for the most part, most of the attack. And then this next one here is kind of, it's also related to the attack, but it's its basically saying like, how fast or slow are we gonna play this attack? So this did the same thing as the first one before, because it's playing really, really fast. But if we do the middle one, it's playing at a different pace. And then the net last one, it's going really slow. It's like, oh man, it's taking forever to get to it. And you can also have all three all three of these on or two on, one off, two off. It's kind of totally up to you. And the last one's basically the same thing as the first one, just with the release knob. That's the only real difference of that. So that basically concludes the timbre section. Uh, if there's something that you're still not uh, completely, I guess if something confuses you maybe, or it's something that you don't really understand, or who knows what, if there or maybe... I went too fast over something or skipped over something, or maybe there's, a, there's something you want to learn more about, please let me know. Please drop in the comments and I'd be glad to answer for it, answer you. Good Lord. So if there's anything else uh, that you guys want to know, drop it down and maybe in the next video or the next couple of ones, uh, maybe we can make a video addressing different questions and answering them and all that and have some good time with Harmer because this synth is very, very cool. And we're literally just scratching the surface. So if this is already cool for you, then you have a whole world to explore very shortly. And in the next video, we will be talking about the filtering section, which is kind of going to be a little bit in depth because there's a lot going on with the filter section and what you can and cannot do with it. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you, if you liked it, drop a thumbs up or a comment saying, hey, this is awesome. If you hated it, I'm sorry. Maybe the next one will be a little bit better for you. So we'll see you in the next one.